Good morning, everyone. This is Melinda. It is day three of our cruise on the Carnival Sunshine. There's so much to share, so please stay tuned. Today, we are at Carnival's private island, Half Moon Key. We have been here before and we'll wait until later after the rush to go ashore. Speaking of going ashore, our steward delivered these going ashore instructions to our stateroom yesterday. It explains the shuttle process. Because the waters around Half Moon Key are quite shallow, preventing the ship from docking, those wishing to go ashore to experience Half Moon Key will do so by catching a tender boat to the island. The tender process can take about 15 to 20 minutes. A tender ticket is required until late morning. Because we are going ashore this afternoon, we do not need a tender ticket. Now, already this morning, I have begun videotaping our full ship tour, which I will share with you in another video. So be watching for that. I'm going to get off here now get my project, that is, the ship tour video done, so we can get off the ship this afternoon, early this afternoon, and maybe swim in the beautiful Bahamas waters again. I'll be sure to get some footage to share with you as I can. So until later. Most of the morning was taken up with gathering footage for the ship tour. I did have a cup of black coffee before starting my project, but I skipped the gym and breakfast this morning and opted to fast until lunch. Before I share with you the lunch venue we have chosen for today, I would like to mention something about complimentary lunchtime dining on board the Carnival Sunshine. In my opinion, this is where Carnival hits it out of the park. The other three cruise lines I've experienced, Royal Caribbean, MSC, and Holland America, do not have the variety of lunchtime venues that Carnival has. On this five-day cruise, we won't even have to touch the buffet, except of course for maybe dessert, because there are so many complimentary options to choose from. Besides the main dining room on sea days and the nearly always open Lidl Marketplace buffet, there are Cucina del Capitano, Gigi's Asian Kitchen, Cuban Bites at the Havana Bar, the Carnival Deli, Pizzeria del Capitano, and blue iguana and oh yeah there's one more i forgot to mention that's today's venue guys burgers before coming on the cruise i heard from others that guys burgers is a very popular place to eat on carnival ships so we decided to wait until the first port date that is today when crowds are thinner to try it out it is open from 12 to 6 and we arrived a little bit early and got a table starboard side of the Lido pool here on deck nine. And we took some time to read about the different kind of burgers they make. We're first in line. That never happens. I ordered the plain Jane and fixed it up at the fixings bar and hubby ordered pig patty. Look. That was a very good burger and the fries were really fresh and hot. It is now time to make our way to the gangway on deck zero forward to catch the shuttle to Half Moon Key. Thank you. Thank you.
While we make our way to the island, I'm going to share a brief geography lesson and info on Half Moon Key. Half Moon K, Half Moon Key, which is it? Well, I'm going to say it is Half Moon Key because that is what Bahamians call it. Their island, their rules. Anyway, Bahamas is an archipelago. That is, it is a 600 mile long chain of islands made up of 700 islands, islets, and keys. Of those 700 islands, islets, and keys, about 40 of them are inhabited. Half Moon Key, formerly known as Little San Salvador Island, is Carnival Corporation's private island, and it is staffed during the day by Bahamian staff that are employed by Carnival Corporation and that commute to the island daily. Other than a handful of caretakers, no one lives on the island. Half Moon Key covers about 2,400 acres and is mostly a nature preserve with native vegetation for nesting birds and wildlife. The island has a welcome center, a church for weddings, an ice cream parlor, restrooms, shops for picking up some souvenirs, a water sports center, horse stables to ride horses on a beach, Half Moon Lagoon Aqua Park with slides and a pirate ship, private cabanas and stingray encounters, just to name a few things. It also has bars and a food pavilion. Now, the ship caters a picnic lunch at the pavilion for guests, but we will not be partaking in it since we have already eaten lunch. Enough information. It's time to sit back and enjoy the rest of the ride. First order of business is to shop for our one souvenir per port. On all our cruises, we pick up something with the name of the country or port we are stopping at. It is usually a bracelet or a keychain or a lapel pin. Now we are heading to the beach, which is our only other agenda item for our visit to Half Moon Key. To the left here is where we will later pick up the tender boat back to the ship. To the right is where we would go for the island barbecue if we were going to eat lunch here, but we are not. So we are going this way to the beach. Oh, Bahamas beaches again. Come along with me as we head to the uncrowded end of the beach. Oh 
After an hour and a half swimming and lounging on the beach, we are now on the tender boat heading back to the ship. Looks like we are catching the same tender that all the carnival ship staff are taking back. Remember when I pointed out at the entrance to the beach the yellow pavilion where you pick up the tender boat back to the ship? When we reached that pavilion, there was no wait to get on the boat, but the boat was only one quarter full when we boarded. So we had to sit for a good 20 minutes while we waited for it to fill up. Here's a tip for you. When taking the tender back to the ship, they usually unload from the starboard side of the top deck. If you want to be one of the first off the boat, sit at the gate on the top deck, starboard side. We are hungry and dinner's still a couple hours away, so we are going to stop by our stateroom and shower quickly then go up to the buffet and see about getting some fruit. Well, the buffet is closed, so it looks like the Carnival Deli is our only option. Okay, we're going to be going upstairs to deck 10 to see if we can catch some sail away. But before that, we're going to take this opportunity to ride the atrium elevator down and then come back up. Okay, let's try this again. I had to shut off the camera because some people got on the elevator on floor eight. Let's hope we can make it all the way up and then down again. Alone. That was pretty. Okay, now it's back up to deck 10 to catch some sail away. We missed it. Oh well, the wake is still beautiful. We are gonna be relaxing here on deck three for a while before heading to dinner. Love to hear the ocean. This evening is a little different than any evening we've experienced on a cruise before. There is no show in the theater to go to. As you can tell from the program here, two game shows will be taking place in the Liquid Lounge, Deal or No Deal, and the Love and Marriage Show. Neither interests us, so we've opted to catch the early PG-rated Punchliner Comedy Club show in the Limelight Lounge. Now we've heard you have to get there a little early to make sure you get in because there is a limited capacity. Well, it doesn't look too packed, but this is the family friendly show and the deal or no deal show is competing with this venue right now. We'll have to see about the 830 show. Day three is coming to a close. Following Kenny Miller's entertaining funny performance this evening, we spent some time out on deck three 
just outside our window listening to the waves. What an awesome way to end the evening. Tomorrow we are going to be in Nassau and we want to be up early so we can be off the ship early. We are scheduled to meet with some of our friends. It is getting late and I'm pretty tired. So I'm going to end this here and get to bed. Until next time, safe cruising out there. Good night.